So my last video on intermittent fasting caused a bit of a stir. This is an outrage. And by outrage, I mean one or two people in the comment section telling me that a calorie deficit and calorie counting does not result in weight loss. The fact of the matter is, however, it is a simple science and it really is calories in, calories out, because it's the number of calories that you consume versus the number of calories that you burn. The reason calorie counting doesn't work per se is because for most people that is not sustainable. Let me explain what I mean. So for most people, they will try to calorie count what they eat. They will severely restrict what they eat as opposed to when, which is where I'll come back to intermittent fasting. Most people will just reduce the calories and cut out all of the nice things that they like to eat and therefore trying to restrict the calories in that kind of strict way. This and things like it are not sustainable because it is essentially cutting out the things that you enjoy. The reason that intermittent fasting works is because it builds a pattern of behavior because it really is the diet that you need to attack rather than the food that you eat that you need to attack. And so restricting the number of calories is a certain way of losing weight, but by counting the calories, by default, what you're going to do is look at the foods that you eat and most people will think, I'm not going to eat that food because it's high in calories. However, if you severely restrict yourself from the food that you enjoy eating, it's not sustainable. Most people will only ever do that for one or two weeks at a time. Many studies have proven that it doesn't really matter what weight loss program or diet that you use as long as you use it consistently over a period of time. And this is what most people do not do. However, it just so happens that intermittent fasting is something that you can sustain and you can build up a pattern of behavior over a period of time and you can sustainably reduce your calories to the point that you're in a calorie deficit. But intermittent fasting also has a number of other benefits because it forces your body to learn a different pattern of moving in and out of a fat burning stage. Because as I said in my previous video, your body prefers to burn glycogen because it's easier, it's quicker, and particularly when you do exercise and you're trying to lose weight, your body is looking for that quick release fuel, which it will get as glycogen. And so particularly if you're doing exercise, but typically in any normal state, your body is still going to prefer glycogen because it's easier to burn and fat is easier to store. So the natural result of moving less and eating more, whether you like it or not, is that you're going to gain weight in the form of fat because your body will store the fat because it's easier. It will burn the glycogen, which you generally get through carbohydrates and sugars because that's easier to burn. In rare cases, such as certain diets, when you cut out all of the carbs and all of the sugars and all of the fats and you only eat protein, then sure, your body is going to use protein as a source of fuel. Anything that spikes your blood sugar is then going to trigger an insulin response, which is to bring down your blood sugar, but is also going to promote fat storage. So the combined effect of all of these things, and yes, it is a lot more complicated than that. That is a very, very simplified version. But the net result of all of those things combined is that you're going to store fat, you're going to burn the glycogen, it's going to uh, develop your circadian rhythm so that you're hungry at a certain time. And when you're hungry, you're going to reach for those things that your body knows it can get energy from much more quickly on a ready basis, which is from glycogen, which is carbs, which is sugars. So if you eat those things, you're going to spike your blood sugar. It, your body is going to feel satiated very much more quickly. So those are the things that you crave. This is why when you have food cravings, you reach for those kind of snacks, which are high in carbs, high in processed materials high in sugars because your body can readily absorb them and generate energy very very quickly what isn't quite so satisfying is when your body moves into a fat burning state because it is much more in the background you don't really feel like you are consuming very many calories when you're consuming them as fat and burning them as fat but the net result is that you will burn more fat more easily 
obviously in a fat burning state which is typically achieved either through intermittent fasting or through very long periods of exercise rather than short intense periods of exercise. Now in my previous video when I said you're not going to be burning fat and glycogen at the same time, yes strictly speaking you will be burning some fat all of the time as well as some glycogen all of the time but the amount of fat that you're burning is not going to be that which is going to produce a significant result for you whilst you are more readily burning glycogen as your fuel. This is why for me intermittent fasting works very well and for many people intermittent fasting works very well. However, let's brush aside all of those myths that either breakfast is the killer meal of the day because it isn't necessarily or that breakfast is by contrast the most important meal of the day because it isn't necessarily. What is important is the number of calories that you take in overall on a regular basis. Now this again to go against this idea it's not just calorie counting it it is calories in and calories out but it is more a case of the pattern that you develop over a period of time. Because the simple science is this, if you consistently consume more calories than you burn, you are going to gain weight because your body is going to store that as energy, either as glycogen or more likely as fat. So it very much is calories in, calories out, but it is more, as I say, just to repeat, just for emphasis, it's more about the diet, it's more about the pattern of behavior over a consistent period of time. Just like one burger to a slim person is not going to make any difference, just as with all respect one salad to someone who is overweight is not going to make any difference. It is a pattern that's going to make the difference over a period of time. A slim person will gradually get fat if they only eat burgers and consume many more calories than they burn and vice versa. So just to dispel some of those ideas it is about calories in calories out but not necessarily about counting the calories because the typical mindset that goes with that is a deprivation mindset and a deprivation mindset is not sustainable. This is why intermittent fasting works over a period of time because as you can see from this scrolling graph here this is a long period of time that we have maintained an intermittent fasting over that period of time. Now I am not overweight but I eat pretty much what I want and I do drink fairly regularly but I still exercise and my overall pattern is taking in fewer calories than I burn because I exercise at least once or twice if not three times a day with the walks that we go on and I do watch what I eat in terms of calories but not to the point that I'm literally counting the calories on the box. That would be depriving myself of the things that I enjoy which I don't do but I do keep an overall eye on the quality of food, the number of calories in general but for me the intermittent fasting works. It's not for everybody but it is a pattern that works for lots of people. Yes strictly speaking you should seek medical advice before you take any drastic change to your diet but as I've recently said to others a GP or a doctor is not necessarily a nutritionist and is not necessarily going to give you the best nutritional or best diet advice. If you have a specific medical condition, yes of course the doctor is the best person to be telling you how to treat and how to manage that medical condition. If you want to know how to maintain a healthy weight and a healthy lifestyle you're better going to a very experienced fitness coach or nutritionist or someone that has really done what we are talking about. I've maintained a slim physique for well all of my life really. I've had the odd time here or there when I've not been able to train because of injuries and I've gained weight because I still eat what I want but then it really is a case of balancing the calories in versus calories out burnt through a form of exercise and as I said in my previous video you are always burning calories on a daily basis. Everybody has a resting metabolic rate and you're burning a number of calories 
And then there are these arguments over when you've lost weight, then you the effect disappears and you start to gain weight. That's because you're no longer in a calorie deficit. So if you've lost a lot of weight, you will naturally in a resting state burn fewer calories. So then you need to take in fewer calories to maintain either the same weight or the weight loss. But as I said, it's about a pattern of behavior. It's about a pattern of eating, a pattern of dieting, and a pattern of exercise. Taking all these things together, it's not about getting up at five in the morning to do that burning, crushing exercise that makes you feel rubbish, because again, that is not sustainable. Unless you are the person that enjoys getting up at five o'clock in the morning and you enjoy being awake first thing and getting on with things. For me, it's normally work with a combination of exercise. If that's not you, it's not sustainable. If going at lunchtime for a brisk walk or even a jog or going to the gym in the evening, if that is sustainable for you, that is a pattern that you can maintain and then you can indeed burn more calories than you take in to result in a net weight loss. But it has to be sustainable and it has to get away from this idea of calorie counting, which is why I stay away from the idea of calories generally. But as I said, it really is calories in, calories out. I hope that clarifies a few things. I hope it's useful. Please like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.